Yes, so we will start. Um, hello and uh, welcome everyone to another cup of tech session by Noble Proc. Um, our today's topic is RPA, Robotic Process Automation, and we are here joined by our lead consultant, uh, Mr. Ahmed Yusuf. Uh, Ahmed is our senior consultant and has completed more than 5,000 training hours in the subjects like RPA, cybersecurity, uh, React Native, Android and iOS development, uh, software development, software security, and many other, other areas. Uh, he recently completed a certification on web application security yesterday. So, Ahmed, congratulations for that. Uh, we you, wish you all the you best. Everyone. Yeah, we yeah, wish you all the best. Um, and today's session is all about RPA. So, we'll be discussing what is uh, RPA, its um, capabilities, where to use and where not to use RPA, and some uh, how to apply some machine learning and artificial intelligence um, in the IQ boards and, and many other um, areas and topics. Uh, before I ask Ahmed to formally introduce himself and in detail and uh, take the session forward, I would like to share some logistics of this webinar. Uh, so number one is that this webinar is recorded and it will be used um, online for our marketing purposes on our social media channels. Uh, so I'm sure that we have your consent and you're okay with that. Uh, the second thing is that we have muted everyone. Uh, and the floor will be opened at the end of the webinar for questions. But if you have uh, any question and if you want to, to ask any qu live questions, then there is an option of Q&A at the bottom of your uh, Zoom screen. Feel free to um, send us your questions. Feel free to raise your hands so that we can take your questions and then we'll put it in front of Ahmed. Uh, if not then in there, he will address all the questions at the end of the webinar. Uh, but we do encourage you to ask as many questions as uh, possible to keep the learning session effective and engaging. And without uh, taking more time, I'd like to request Ahmed to formally start. Uh, thank you so much once again. Thank you, Ayman. Thank you so much for this lovely introduction. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, hope you are doing fine and staying safe. Welcome to this new cup of tech from Nobel Brog about uh, RBA, uh, Robotic Process Automation. Um, so through this session, we'll be covering a um, couple of important topics that actually helps us to start understanding what's happening and what is RPA is all about. We'll be starting by defining what is RPA, and then we will be um, discussing a quite interesting and popular question that's always uh, being asked when we come to RPA, which is what are the difference between RPA and EBM? Because both of them seems to be something like process automation, or both of them tends to automate the work that we are doing. So we'll be introducing the difference between those two concepts and those two applications. And then we will go in a deep dive with RPA capabilities. We can see what actually RPA can do. And then we will be discussing uh, a quite important aspect, which is when we shouldn't think about using RPA or on the other hand, or in other words, what is the checklist that we need to ensure that we have before we start implementing our RPA projects or our RPA transformation. And finally, we will be uh, speaking about um, a quite new and advanced topics that actually has been recently added to RPAs, which is applying machine learning and artificial intelligence to the robotic process automation, what we call IQ bots. We will be introducing this concept. We'll know how this actually new concept might be transforming the way RPE is working uh, nowadays. And we will see what are those capabilities. And these are the main highlights of uh, today's uh, session. And after that, we will have the floor for your uh, discussion and the question answer. And as Ayman has uh, mentioned, if you have any question during the session, feel free to just drop a message on the Q&A and I will have some time between different sections to have a look at your question and address it if this is uh, the suitable time for that. Okay, so before we get started into the technicality, just a brief introduction about myself. My name is Ahmed Youssef and I'm pleasured to be with you today. Uh, my title is Senior Solution Architect. I have spent the most of my career as a software engineer 
developing applications using those uh, programming language and other programming language. Uh, I have been building applications for web applications, cloud, Android, iOS, IoT, and blockchain uh, systems. And mainly I'm focused and interested in the digital transformation and process automation uh, part of, uh, the, from the business perspective. So let's get started and start talking about RPA. So we will be starting by the definition, but not the definition of the RPA itself. Before we deep dive into the RPA, we need to define a quite basic concept, which is automation. So RBA is one kind of automation. So let's start by defining what automation is. What is automation? If we are trying to define automation, we might find a couple of different definitions for that, but a short and neat definition can be stated as automation is a technique of making devices, process or system to operate automatically. So when we think about automation, the first thing that comes into our mind that there is something that we do by our hands or what we call manually, and we need to stop doing this manually anymore. We need something to take care of this specific task, to take care of this specific job or decision in order to speed up the process, in order to do it in, in a better um, accuracy, in order to scale it up, and all those are the main benefits behind the automation in general. As we said, automation, it's not only about RPA. RPA is one of the kinds or one of the techniques of automation. We will be introducing or we'll be having a glimpse on these different categories, but we, our main focus is RPA. But in general, if we are uh, exploring what is automation, we will say that we have three main categories of automation, which are software automation, robotic process operation automation, which is RPA, and this is the main uh, focus of us. The third one is business process automation. So before we dive into robotic process automation, and in order to understand it, we need to highlight what are those other two categories in order to be able to tell the difference. So software automation, actually, this is something that we are dealing with all the time. So having any piece of software that actually automates something that you have used to do in a manual way is some kind of software automation. So for instance, the calendar where you have received the invitation for this session, actually this is some kind of automating calendar management that we had a manual way to do before when we have those agendas and we have to write down our appointments and we cancel the appointment by just scratching the line and do this stuff. So software automation, actually, it's a very old topic and it's a very popular and everyone is dealing with software automation currently. So this is about software automation and it will not be a surprise when I tell you that or when we see how uh, RPA works, we will see that RPA actually is some kind of automation that's spelled over software automation. So you will see that we are going to build, for example, a bot that actually will be taking care of the activities that I am doing on my automated software calendar. So now when I'm receiving some invitation based on some specific uh, criteria for this invitation, I might be accepting, I might say no, I, am, I will check if it's conflicts or not. So we can think of robotic process automation is building a bot that actually will be simulating the same thing that I'm doing and start interacting with my calendar to start accepting those invitations and resolve those concepts on my behalf. We will be exploring this and we'll be diving uh, uh, into this concept in more detail, but this is the main difference between software automation and actually what we are talking about, which is RPA. So other examples for software automation, think of having some automatic backup solution. So let's say that you have an application that is requested in a periodical uh, basis to take a backup of your hard disk and store it somewhere. This is some kind of automation. And this is 
is called software automation because I have a dedicated software or a dedicated script that actually do this. Excel macros. And if you would please uh, share with me, raise of hands if you have dealed with Excel macros before. This is, uh, might be helpful. If anyone has dealed with Excel macros, yes, Mr. Omar has. Yeah, that's nice. Anyone else has dealed with Excel macros? Okay, okay, that's cool. So Excel macros actually is one example of software automation because actually I am developing a specific macro and macro is a small pro program, small software that will run inside Excel in order to do some calculations, make filtration, do some stuff that I used to do manually on the data, but the Excel macro will be doing this automatically. The other example is OS schedule tasks for Windows and for Linux machines or servers. We have this kind of feature where I can write some instructions for the machine that it should be doing specific tasks at specific times. So this is as well some kind of automation and this is goes under software automation. So this is about software automation. Let's deep dive into RPA or robot and let's explore this definition together. Robotic process automation, short RPA, is the software that can mimic the action of a human user. It performs action on a PC to automate business process which are highly repetitive and rule-based. What does this mean? Let me give you a simple example. Let's say that you are checking your email in the morning and you have a specific rules and to check and you, when you find some of the emails that's coming from a specific sender or an email with a specific subject, you just put this into some specific folder and the others will be downloaded into a specific directory at your desktop and some other emails you should reply with them with some criteria. So when I'm giving this example of software that actually automates how you do your inbox, you might think of some filter creation. And actually, lots of people actually are utilizing this built-in feature in most of modern uh, mail servers, such as Gmail. You can create filters. And those filters actually are applied among your inbox, your incoming email, and start filtering what's happening and start downloading some attachment, archiving some emails, replying with automatic reply to some uh, other sender. This is a built-in feature, a built-in automated feature inside your Gmail. But in other cases, you might be dealing with some in on-premises or some built-in software solution that actually does not provide this. So here comes the feature or the usage of RPA. When we think about RBA, think of it like this. Think that you are hiring an intern or a junior, and that junior is grabbing a chair and setting you, and you start teaching that intern every and every single click you are doing on the screen. So you are saying that I will be clicking on inbox, I will be selecting those emails, I will be clicking on the button move, I will be typing this statement, and that very clever in turn, in turn will be recording everything you are doing. So once you get up your chair, you will be sitting on that chair and doing exactly what you are doing by click and by each letter you entered or every stroke you typed on the keyboard. But in RBA, this is not an intern, this is the robot or what we call in short, bot. So RBA is all about creating a specific bot and that bot will be recording everything you are doing visually on the screen, including all mouse clicks, all button clicks, all drags, all drops, all key strokes you are typing on your keyboard and it will be replaying the same uh, cycle with some kind of smartness or some kind of um, expectation so it can be tweaking uh, a little bit if the case is a little bit different but this is mainly what actually RPA is more about and you will see a video how that RPA actually can work. Okay 
So RBA can be used to automate almost anything. We don't require special features inside the software, such as the filters in the email. We, if we don't have this, and this is actually in most of cases what happens, if we don't have this automation filter, uh, feature, if we need to automate some specific task among different applications, we can teach our bots how to do this so they will start just doing that. So this is in general what's about uh, RBA. So let's see how RBA actually is working or uh, dealing inside the market. We will see that RBA as industry is actually exponentially growing from just 250 million in 2016, and it's expected to be around $3 billion in 2021. So this actually is telling us that RPA is very popular and RPA actually is proven that it has, or it's, deliver, it's delivering to the business high um, return on investment. A lot of time is saved, a lot of cost, higher accuracy as we are going to see. One more interesting insight about the market of RPA, we can say that in the near uh, future, which is the upcoming five years, according to Deloitte, they say that we will be seeing some universal adoption. What do we mean by universal adoption? That means that RPA will be almost adopted everywhere. So if we are considering another example of universal adoption currently, we can say that social media. Now, social media is universally adopted by all business around the world. You cannot name a single company that actually does not have a social media presence. So according to Deloitte, in the upcoming five years, we will be seeing RPA actually in almost all the business around the world, with the exception that between those two examples, RPA and social media, we need also to consider that Social media presence is for free, but RPE is not. So actually this what makes RPE not, um, not penetrating the market with the same percentage of uh, social media. But to some extent, we can say that all the capable companies that actually has uh, the ability to purchase some RPE solution, they will be doing that because actually it will be saving them lots of time and money and increasing the accuracy. And by the end of day, increasing customer satisfaction as we are going to see. Okay, so let's deep dive into the benefits of RBA with the, with the highlight that we have just stated. And let's recall that example of that intern that you requested to uh, him to come and set uh, beside you and try to record everything you are doing on the screen and he will be replaying this after you. We know that there are some exceptions and not everything we are doing on the computer actually can be recorded and replayed in the same exact manner because we might be facing different cases. This also has some way of automation, but let's say that not 100% of our work is going to be automated and this is true. But let's now focus about what can be automated. What can be automated actually will have the following benefits. In that case, you will be saving major of human work. So if I, let's say I am as employee, I'm doing or I'm implementing 10 different tasks and I have been able to automate five of them. So this means that 50% of my time will be free, so I will be able to dedicate this to other tasks. So this will be saving major of human work. And actually 50% is not a high estimation. In some cases, some companies actually success to implement RPA that save them even higher percentages. In some cases that might be reaching 60 or 70% of human workload can be automated using bots. So if we are saving major of human work, this will be impacting on the system accuracy, on the work accuracy, because we actually are eliminating human error. So if in some case I had some human-based mistake, which I didn't 
follow the process as I should be. For example, I didn't have my coffee in the morning or um, my mind is busy with something. Those cases are not applicable on the bot. The bot will be doing exactly the same task every and each time for it. And this will be giving the people the opportunity to focus on other more creative tasks rather and routine work. And here we should highlight a very important rule. As long as it can be automated, humans shouldn't be doing that. So everything that can be automated, humans shouldn't be doing that. Actually, this is a very old concept and actually it started with the Industrial Revolution in Europe when they started to automate the activities of packing things and of filling bags with products and doing those stuff. And then we started to seeing huge factories and so on and so forth. In that case, people actually started to focus on more important tasks. I know that when we mention this point, actually uh, a very fundamental question that would come up to our minds, which is the theory of robots replacing human, if this is going to happen or not, if there is a threat or not, and we will be uh, having space of time for this specific topic and we will be discussing this in more detail. Okay. As a result of what we have just mentioned, this will result in a process speed up. So let's say that me as human can do a specific task in the day and actually this might take, let's say, one hour. So in that case, I will be able to do this task only eight times a day. When it comes to robot, the robot will be able to do it 24 hours by seven with no leaves. So it will be able to do it in more times. And actually what I'm doing in one hour, the bot can be finishing this in less time. So actually the process will be speed up by high percentage. And that finally will increase customer satisfaction. So some correspondence or some application that might require three or four working days to be done. If we are implementing RPA, they can be executed in only one working day. And on the other hand, when we implement or if we as customer are dealing with some company or some organization that actually utilizing RPA on a high demand, we will stop listening to that word of the duration in working days. Why is that? Because actually in that case, most of proceeds actually are automated through robots and robots actually does not have weekends. They are working 100% of time. So in that case, I will have this application that should be processed in one day rather than it's working day, holiday, even if it's Christmas Eve, it should be processed without no stop, which by the end of the day will be increasing customer satisfaction. Okay, here comes the very fundamental question. And in that case, actually, I'm interested to, um, to uh, explore uh, your thoughts. So if you think that RBA or robots in general will be replacing a human, would you please show me a raise of hand? Yeah. Okay, two votes. Okay, so two against three, three votes. Okay, okay, so it seems that it's happening and RPA or bots will be replacing human. Yeah, thank you for that. We have a question, let me check that. Yeah, yeah. Example, um, Sir Omar says that example Amazon warehouse. Actually, Amazon warehouse is uh, is an example where robots actually are replacing uh, human for uh, the automation of the warehouse. Actually, this is uh, this is true. This is actually uh, uh, happens. But in order to uh, eliminate that threat or make this uh, not very scary to us. Let's say that 
what happens when we have a new technology that actually automates what we are doing or that can carry out the tasks that we do in a higher speed with a higher accuracy and with lower cost these three aspects mean that this technology is going to dominate no matter what if we have some solution that actually will be doing what human do in a higher speed with higher accuracy and less cost actually this technology is going to dominate but the point is when we have that new technology actually coming to the market and it's going to automate it does not automate 100% of the process. It automates a specific task. So actually, who loses by introducing this new technology? The one who is specialized only on that task and the one who refuses to transfer or to move from this task and start working on something else. So this is quite interesting because technologies are automating everything we are doing on daily basis. And actually this is happening for centuries. And the point is, if when this new technology is introduced, it replaces some of our tasks, but on the other hand, it creates other job activities. So let's say for example, when machine was invented in uh, Europe during the industrial revolution, a lot of factory jobs actually were replaced but in the same time, that exact machine, which replaced the human at some aspect, it created lots of other jobs that related to the operation, maintenance, creation, designing, and manufacturing of this machine itself. So what we are saying or what happens when we are talking about robots or automation, we say that when we are introducing such a technology to the market, this does not replace the current jobs, but we can say that it changes the way jobs are distributed. So some of the current jobs will be replaced, some other new jobs will be opened. And the only one who loses, who stays at the same place and refuses to adapt the new technology or try to conflict with that technology, because it seems that technology by the end of way, by the end of day, it wins every and each time okay okay uh threes actually has very very quite interesting point customer may not like to interact with the machine in the sense that they from machine that may not reply to what they really want actually this is very quite interesting point and i agree i agree that at some point of time when we are interacting with machines uh, in most of our daily life, we will miss the human touch. For example, I create, uh, I create bots, I create um, uh, chatting bots on social media and for websites. So when you are uh, trying to, to get some assistance or help, you will be interfacing with a chatbot. And in the same time, when I go to a website and I find a chatbot, actually, I don't feel 100% comfortable. But let's say that having this chatbot actually it has some of the benefits to the organization and to the user itself because actually it will respond to me faster than the human it might be giving me uh, uh, more answers it will be giving me unified answers so if i'm talking to one of the customer representatives and he's giving me some information i might hang up and then uh, dial in again and I'm um, redirect to another one, he might be giving me a different answer because he didn't understand my question in the same way or a lot of things. This will not be happening with bots. But what I think is that when we need to have that human touch, it should be there. So what I'm thinking of, um, uh, of chatbots Chatbots, as you mentioned, will not be able or they might not be able to reply to me what exactly I need. This is true, but we need to consider that chatbots and robots in general are improving. So the accuracy of the results that I'm getting today from Siri, for example, it's not the same accuracy that I used to deal with three years ago, if I'm dealing with... Uh, with um, Siri as well. So over those three years, Siri is getting better. 
and in the next year it will be better than this year so having or dealing with a chatbot that is not able to understand what i'm trying to reach such as human this is true but this is improving and actually this point actually after a couple of years will not be a matter but still what i think in some cases or if we are trying or, or if we succeeded to automate almost the whole process we should maintain a human factor at least that actually will be representing one percent just to handle the very exceptional cases but what i'm trying to say is that now that the chatbot which is able to answer only 10 percent of your questions tomorrow will be able to answer 20 and then will be able to answer 50 and until it's be able to answer 99 percent of your question there might be one percentage that actually will be uh, left over and we should be giving some uh, ability to the users actually to request to be dealing with a human and this should be I, I guess this might be a chargeable service this might not be a free support such as uh, the robot hope this uh, answers your question okay so yeah so in short this question is it is there a threat on some of the jobs to be automated by robots? Definitely, yes. Is 100% of our human existence is going to be replaced? No, because actually robots and uh, robots and automation software actually replaces some or automates some of other tasks. So actually, if we stayed attached to those repetitive tasks that can be automated, that case puts us in a risk but on the other hand if we could adapt to the new technology and start using that instead of conflicting with that at that point we will be seeing the opportunities not the threat okay so this is uh, an a brief into about rba and when it comes to rba we need to tell the difference between rba and bbm and this is what we are going to see just right now. So what is BBM or BBA, Business Process Automation or Business Process Management? In short, we can say that Business Process Automation is about optimizing the entire company automation, the entire company operation through automation. So when we are talking about RPA, we are speaking about automating a specific task that's carried out by specific employee for specific case. This is the scope of RPA. While the scope of PPA is automating the workflow between different entities. So we will say that that application or that case for this specific condition should be assigned to that employee. And after this employee actually will be approving or disapproving or asking for some help it should be automatically sent to the inbox of another employee and then it should be reported and if it wasn't answered in two or three working days it should be flagged and all of this stuff so business process automation is about the holistic view of uh, the company while the rpa serves or automates the task that's done by a single employee at a specific case. So when we think about this, we will find that this is not either or question because at some points people ask, should I adapt or RBA? Should I automate the process uh, in, in a, as business process or should I go to robotic process automation? And actually, as I'm telling you that this is not an either or question, actually we will be able to adapt both of them as we are just going to see in this example, which is hiring process example. Let's consider that we have this case. Thanks to remote delivery, we don't have uh, a whiteboard, but we can use our uh, presentation uh, as a keyboard. Okay, so let's say that we have that, sorry. You still can see my screen? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes. 
Okay. So let's say that we have this applicant is applying CV and he's applying remotely and he's staying safe and wearing his mask. So he will be applying and sending his CV, which is here to the company. So that CV should be received by another man, which is this guy who will be responsible for reviewing that CV based on a specific technical aspect. So this will be the technical interviewer. And there is another man that actually will be able or should be reviewing the CV from human resource point of view, which is the HR. So say that this CV should be sent to the tech guy and once it's approved, it should go to the HR. Otherwise it should be rejected. And if it got rejected, it should be delivered to a third man here who will be the admin. And this admin in that case should be responding to the applicant with a rejection letter. trying to make it as simple as possible. Okay, so if the tech guy rejected, it should be sent to the admin and the admin should be responding with a rejection email to the applicant. The same would happen if it was approved by the tech guy and sent to the HR, but it was rejected from the HR and sent to the admin. So it will be sending a rejection email to that guy again. But if both approved, if both of them send their approval, in that case, it should get back to the admin as well by acceptance flag. And in that case, it should be sent or an email should be sent to that applicant for interview request. Sounds good? Make sense? Okay, so for this cycle, where do you think we can apply RPA? Where do you think we can apply RPA? So Omar said no, I didn't, uh, sorry for missing that. Uh, what was the question? Oh, uh, admin, I guess, okay. So you think that we can apply some RPA for the admin? That's good, sounds good. So if we are trying to apply RPA here, we can say that we will be inviting that robot to watch and record what this admin is doing in order to be able to do the same and after a while, we can take this admin from this point and make him start working on something else. And actually the bot will be able to do what that man used to do. It's, he, he's not fired, okay? We, we didn't fire that admin. He's just uh, having a, a nice time and having an extra day uh, off during each week. And he's very happy with that. Let's assume it, 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 it worked that way, okay? Okay, so what about the tech guy? Do you think that we can replace it with the bot? What do you think? Can we replace the tech guy or the HR guy with a bot? Can we do that? Uh, one of the participants, uh, uh, Lucene, is saying that uh, yes. 
Okay, we can replace the take guy with. Uh, sorry, I didn't see the chat. Yeah, take guy. We can replace. We can replace him with uh, with the robot. Okay. What about the HR? Can we replace the HR, the HR with a robot as well? HR cannot. Okay. So Muhammad said that HR cannot be replaced. HR is important, so we cannot replace it. That sounds good. Okay. So let's deep a little bit dive. What actually the tech guy is doing if we break it down into HR? No. Okay. So we agree that we can replace the tech guy, but we cannot replace the HR guy. Okay. So for me as tech guy, I, I might not be very happy with this, but uh, okay. I, you, you have a, a nice point of view and I agree with that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So let's have a deep dive what actually that tech guy and that HR guy are doing during their day. We will find that some of their tasks are repetitive routine work. So let's say, for example, that tech guy is not just making, or the HR guy, the same actually applies for both. Both of them are doing some tasks that require their mental thinking and their technical experience in the tech uh, field and in the HR field, and some other tasks actually are repetitive, such as sorting the CVs, marking that this CV is viewed and this view is not, having this CV or moving that CV from a specific, uh, from the source directory to another directory, sending a request or an email to the admin and attaching that CV along with and saying that this is accepted or rejected. So let's think about it like this way. What do you think if we are going to assess each one of these guys, we are not going to replace any of them, but we will be automating some of their work. So now RPA, it's not everything or nothing question, but that the guy will be viewing the CVs and the robot will be able to grab the CVs from the email and download the attachments and sort them to a specific category or a specific criteria into different folders. So this will be done by the bot, not by the human. The human will be focusing only on viewing the CVs and thinking that this should be accepted, that should be not. And then this, he will just open an Excel sheet. The man will be doing that. And he, he will put the name of the applicant or the name of the file and will hit or type next to that name accepted or rejected, or will be just typing A, the letter A or the letter R. And then he will be saving that file and going back to checking the CVs. Another bot will be watching that Excel sheet. And on a change of that Excel sheet, it will detect the new cell that's applied, what is the status, if it is A or R, and then it's going to grab that applicant CV and send it to the next guy who will be the HR guy or the admin who will be in that case, another bot waiting to receive that result in order to communicate with the applicant with either a rejection and thank you and uh, keep in touch that we call the keep in touch email or he will be just sending him an interview link or an interview request. Does this sound good? Make sense? Uh, Ahmed? Yes. I think Mr. Muhammad has uh, a question because he has raised uh, a hand. Yes, yes, please. Yes, of course. I have unmuted. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Muhammad, if you have a question, please go on. Because I could see his uh, hand raised. So. Yeah.
Okay. I guess this might be um, something previous. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Previous. Yeah. Uh, and and um, Mr. Yasser asked uh, about the requirement. Uh, what is the requirement uh, of infrastructure, in, uh, infrastructure to yeah, run an RPA? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Actually, this is this is a nice question. Um, in general, what we what we need to run an RPA, we need to have a dedicated server where we are designing and implementing our bots. And on the other hand, we need to have the ability to install those bots on those guys' uh, laptops or, or desktops, because actually that bot should be working on the same machine that this guy is working. And in that case, we have two different kinds of bots, some bot called attended bot, and another one is called unattended. The difference between them, if they are working in the same virtual or in the same visual environment along with the employee or they are working a different or separated one. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, I guess uh, uh, Mr. Omar as well has a uh, hand raised. Is it new hand raised? Uh, yeah. Hello, Omar. How are you? you? I am I'm fine. Um, my question is that is uh, what's the difference between RPA and AI? That's my first question. If okay. there is uh, a difference or not, uh, does okay. you need uh, AI to uh, make RPA work? Okay. And the third one is that you mentioned Siri, right? Uh, yeah. Now, now I'm confused. Is it an AI or is it RPA? Okay, that's that's good. Okay, thank you, thank you for for thank for you so much this question. Okay, so if you um, if you uh, allow me, I will be answering this once I come to the part of IQ bots. I will be explaining what is uh, actually the IQ part. Actually, it's structured in the same way you ask it those questions, and actually this make me think if you have seen this presentation before. Have you? Okay, just just kidding. I have just created that a uh, couple of days ago. Yeah, yeah, I'm just kidding. Yeah, okay. So, but, but actually you, you, you stated the correct questions that actually represents the flow that I'm going to uh, talk about once it comes to uh, the IQ box. So thanks for that. Okay, so uh, I guess now this is clear where we will be implementing or where we can utilize um, RBA. If we are trying to consider BBA or business process automation in that case, we can think of it like those arrows. So if the bot is replacing or assisting each one of those human or the stations where the application is going, so automating those links, those arrows is the business process automation. So that's why we uh, started thinking or started saying that it's not an either or question. The business process automation is about the holistic view, how this case should start and where it should end. And in between, what is the workflow? That each and every step in that workflow might be a human or a robotic process automated task or a combination of them. So that's why it's not an either or question between BBA and RBA. In most of time, we actually are uh, linking both of them together. And actually in most of time, we, uh, we think of um, having um, RBA first. And once we have RBA implemented in place, actually it will be very uh, easy to start implementing um, BBA. Okay, so now IQ bots where we will be answering uh, Mr. Omar's question. So let's start about uh, talking about artificial intelligence first. So artificial intelligence, actually, it's a computer uh, science related and very popular topic where the machine will be able to mimic the intelligence of human. And here comes a nice way of uh, listing or talking about the artificial intelligence application such as Siri. So actually this answers uh, uh, the first question or one of Mr. Omar's questions. If Siri is an RBA or artificial intelligence, actually Siri is some kind of 
artificial intelligence application that can be used for automation, but it's not RBA. So Siri is an AI. I have been mentioning Siri as an example of um, automation or machine interaction, machine to human interaction, but it's not considered RPA at all because RPA, as we said, it's just recording something you are doing on the screen and it's going to replay the same thing you are or you have just done. Alexa, it's the same virtual assistant as Siri. Excel functions, and we might be debating this a little bit. Do you think that Excel functions is some kind of artificial intelligence or no? And I'm interested actually to know what you think about that. Anyone thinks that Excel functions can be considered as some kind of artificial intelligence? Okay, so I want to say I don't think that Excel function can be some kind of artificial intelligence. Okay, so Excel function, if I'm writing an Excel function that actually will be checking on some data and making some uh, or applying some calculations in order to give me some forecast for the upcoming sales or the sales for the upcoming quarter. This is something that I have programmed. If we are thinking of it, has it done something that actually requires some intelligent person to do? Don't you think? Okay, the difference between AI and RP. Okay, I will be doing this just right now. Okay, let, let's get back to this. Let's say that AI is where we are implementing a software that actually is able to do something that we meant to do. It's actually a very broad kind of software. When it comes to RBA, RBA is an application or uh, a bot that actually will be applying some tasks that I'm doing. Let me give you a very simple example of RPA. I, let's say that I'm creating a bot and this bot actually will open the download folder, downloads folder, and will be selecting the MP3 files from my downloads and spread them into or transfer them into music directory and we'll be selecting the files with the JPEG or PNG extension and put them into the pictures and the movies to the other one and so on and so forth. My question to you, do you think this is artificial intelligence based application or not? No, okay, so thanks for this answer. This is an RBA example, which is not artificial intelligence. This is an example on RBA that is not AI based. So RBA in general is something that actually automates a task that I'm doing on daily basis. That task might require artificial intelligence as some examples that we are going to see. And in some cases, it does not require AI to be in place. That's why when we come to RPA, we say that the bottom line or the main definition of RPA, creating a bot that automates a task that I'm doing. That task, if that task requires some kind of intelligence, in that case, I should be using the intelligent bots, which, uh, which actually are bots supported with artificial intelligence, which are smart bots. On the other hand, if I am not doing something that requires that kind of complex or that kind of intelligence, in that case, I, sh I can be using the normal kind of bots, which, which are RPA bots, but they are not AI. So we can think of AI as an additional or a smart, uh, uh, smart capability that can, add, can be added to the RPA. Does this make sense? Have I answered this? Okay, yeah. 
Okay, so yeah, that's great. Okay, so if we are considering this uh, or uh, highlighting this, let's have an example about some task that actually might require to use some intelligent bot. A task or an example on this, let's say that I need to, as human, to read some text and start to extract some information from this text. Let's say that Paris is 22 degrees today. So I will take this 22 degrees and put it in an Excel sheet for the column of Paris. And then there is another line, it's called London is 16 degrees today. So I will be having this number and put it into London. And a third line in that word file saying that Berlin is 24 degrees today. So I will be copying 24 and put it into an Excel sheet. And my question is, do you think this task require intelligence to be executed or we can automate it using a normal bot? Does it require intelligence? Normal bot, yes, this does not require something advanced because simply I can teach that robot that just cut, yes, just cut what in the middle. If I have this structure, I will tell the bot that you have a statement of five words, just take the third one and that's it. And the first one will be the name of the city and the third one will be just the temperature and that's it. So. But this is not all, always the case. In some cases, I might have some document which is unstructured, looks something like this. The first line says Paris is 22 degrees today. The second line says that it's cold in London at 16 Celsius. And the third line says that Berlin is warmer than Paris by two degrees. Do you think that this task, which is grabbing or extracting those information from this document or Word file and place them in an Excel sheet. Do you think this is require intelligence or not? Yeah, yeah, sure it does. Yeah, definitely sure it does intelligence. So can I be, uh, or can I implement this using bots? The answer is yes, but in that case, I should be using AI powered bots or what's called at some cases IQ bots, which are intelligent bots. So now I guess the difference is, is clear between RPA and AI. They are two different things. But in, in, in lots of cases, I need to combine both of them because the robot is doing specific. And the AI actually enables that bot. If I introduce that capability to the bot, it enables that to do the exact same task. Actually, it's not doing something different, but it will be able to tweak around and start uh, doing some intelligence part. And actually, this is, this is what we usually see, and this is actually what happened when we are seeing that AI feature of Alexa or Siri start or try to ask Siri about the weather tomorrow in 10 different ways and Siri will be able to answer you on all of them. So Siri has AI, but it's not RBA. And in that case, we might be needing an RPA with AI. Sounds good? Any questions so far? Everything is fine. Uh, Ahmed, I have a question from Mr. Abdullah. Yes. And uh, he's asking about the implementation. He wants to know that what are the general phases of implementing an RPA project? Okay. Okay. That's that's nice question. Okay. So uh, uh, let me let me go first with that part, which is uh, when not to use RPA. And then we'll be answering uh, that question if Mr. Abdullah allows us. Okay. Oh, uh, yes, it's fine. It's okay. fine. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks so much. Okay. So if we think that RPA is fine and it's good and it's true, we need to consider some parts before we go and start 
delivering or implementing RPA. The first one is process standardization. As we are seeing that in RPA, we are automating some process that actually required well-defined steps. So with, if within my organization, the proceeds are not that much organized and the standard, I will not be able to implement them or to automate them using bots. So this is the first thing that I should consider before going and implementing RBA. And if I'm missing this part, I should not start implementing RBA until I get that ready. The second thing, I should go and list all the proceeds and start setting priorities for these different proceeds because actually in most of cases, we cannot just start and say that we are going to automate everything. This actually does not happen or this doesn't make sense because we have something that we called ROI. What is the cost that I am paying in order to automate this specific process? And what is the return on automating this specific process? How can we calculate that ROI in order to be able to think about it? Let's consider the investment that we are doing. And actually, this is answer Mr. Abdullah's question about the phases of, uh, of implementing RPA. What actually I need to put in order to build an RPA uh, solution, I need to engineer the process to put the process in a standard form that actually can be easily automated. And then I'm spending other effort in implementing and the designing and testing and deploying those bots in order to ensure that everything is in place. And that bot actually is working with the same accuracy of the human or even higher accuracy, neglecting the human error. So I need to do this. And on return, what I am getting, I'm getting save the effort from that employee so you will be able to focus on other important tasks we will get saving in cost because actually at some point and we have to admit it if i am running a specific uh, uh, process that actually requires 10 employees after saving 50 of their effort i can just have like five employees so actually this reduces the cost and actually it saves time because the task that can be done during the working hours, if I'm uh, depending on, uh, on an employee, if that was automated, in that case, it will be able to run 24 by seven, which at the end actually will be impacting uh, the customer satisfaction and increases the ROI uh, by the end of day. So that's all about the different or the basic highlights about uh, RPA, what's RPA difference between RPA and BBA, where AI actually uh, works with uh, bots and what are the benefits of using RPA and what we need to think of before start starting implementing and adopting uh, RPA. Thanks so much for your time. That was uh, a brief intro about RPA. And if you have any questions, I will be more than happy to answer them. Yeah, we Thanks. have a question here. Uh, so RBA may be a bot to replace a task, like providing some information to a customer, but an artificial intelligence uh, needs AI. Yes, 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 that's correct. That's correct, yeah, yeah. And in, in short, we can say that a bot actually is automating a specific task. So if that task does not require a, a complex uh, calculation, it can be done with a normal bot, but if it requires uh, uh, specific or or some intelligence like interacting as uh, um, as personal assistants such as uh, that the the advanced chatbots in that case it require artificial intelligence. Yeah, that's true. Uh, Yusuf, uh, one question. Uh, you yeah, you sure. mentioned something about uh, Excel functions, right? Yeah. Uh, please correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, uh, my understanding on artificial intelligence is that uh, along the time, it gets uh, more intelligent uh, based yeah. on the data, right? Yeah. Uh, but uh, in Excel function, we are just giving it a specific functions based on yeah. the, the, yeah. Uh, the, co the, the code we write. For yeah. example, uh, mm -hmm. is equal sum. Uh, mm -hmm. It'll do is equal sum till the end of the world if you don't change it. So yeah. how is it... Uh, artificial intelligence just yeah. just please correct yeah, yeah. me if i'm wrong yeah 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 okay i i actually was expecting that question and so, by the way amazing lecture yeah. i i love this lecture 
Thank you, thank you so much. Actually, it's a pleasure to be uh, with us today. Okay, so let me let me uh, answer this question. Um, uh, actually, the way we think what's intelligent and what's not intelligent, it's relative. Why? Let's say that I'm giving you that Excel function and I'm telling you that this Excel function will be able to go through all those data and make this summation and average and do this stuff and applying specific equation, which will not be uh, uh, forever. And by the end of the day, it will be giving you a forecast for the upcoming month based on the trend of uh, the previous months. Now we are not, and I agree with you that we cannot say that this is this required intelligence, but actually we are saying that not because this is not intelligent, but this is not relatively intelligence with respect to the kind of intelligence that we are living with today. Let's have the same example 25 years back. If someone is introducing a software that will be able on its own to go through all those numbers, or let's get back like 30 or 40 years, and someone say that this software will be able to do that, this software at that time will be awarded the prize of the most intelligent software on earth. And what actually we are thinking that Siri is doing right now, if, if Siri stayed on the same level, or if we are comparing the level where Siri will be 10 years from now, by what actually is happening currently, we will be saying that Siri now is not an intelligent software, it's a dummy software. As the same we are comparing our new mobile phones to the old mobile phones. The old mobile phones were revolutionary. We saw that they have very intelligent features that actually now we don't think they are very much intelligent. So the intelligence is some kind of relative. That's why when we ask this question, I usually don't go for the point of is this intelligent or not, but we can say that this task require more intelligence than this that task. So extracting information from the similar lines into an Excel sheet requires less intelligence than extracted information from data that actually is not unified like those three statements that we have seen. Uh, about your question, uh, when you said that it will not change forever, when we are having or we are dealing with a system that actually gets better over time, this is not the feature of um, uh, uh, artificial intelligence, but this is the feature of machine learning. And machine learning actually is one of the kind of artificial intelligence. So if I have an intelligent software and it's doing an intelligent task and it's keeping doing it the same way forever, I cannot say it's not intelligent, it's intelligent. And if I have built more intelligent software using machine learning techniques that will be give, being better over time, it's also intelligent. So both of them are two different kinds of intelligence. Sounds good? Thanks, thanks so much. Okay, so we have another question. What are the software tools and language used to develop those, these RPA and AI? Okay, so AI actually, it's, it's a very broad term. So actually we have almost uh, tons of tools and softwares and programming language to develop AI. Uh, if we are considering, for example, the intelligent or the more intelligent AI, which is the AI that relies on machine learning, it, it's being used using uh, a lot of technologies and a lot of softwares. The most uh, popular one is Python as a uh, programmed language. And the most uh, popular uh, software, something called Jupyter, uh, TensorFlow, uh, PyTorch, uh, some other uh, and those other uh, uh, tools. And if you are interested, I can just uh, um, uh, give you a list of the tools and uh, the, the software and the programming language and where can you start. If you are interested, just drop me a message and I will be providing you the full list. Uh, Ahmed, we have uh, another question and uh, uh, Adrian is saying that uh, uh, is RPA considered a new technology or is it a stable technology? And ca can we say that uh, Excel macros are RPA? Okay, okay. So, so I actually, think there are two questions, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are two, two different questions. Okay, so uh, RPA now, 
we can consider it as stable, uh, stable technology, because actually uh, most of, of companies out there actually have already rolled out lots of models on RPA, so it's not uh, uh, in the development and the research anymore. It's stable. We can start using that. Uh, actually, Excel macros is some kind of automation, but it can consider to be software automation, not robot uh, or robotic uh, process automation, because actually uh, we are not doing that through specific bot recording and replaying manner. It's some kind of programming, so actually it's considered as software automation. Sounds good. Um, yes. A any other questions from the audience, please? Uh, no, uh, I think that's it. Um, okay. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, everyone, for... Uh, thank you, Ahmad, for sparing time mm -hmm. and uh, delivering such a, uh, you know, uh, informative session. And I'm sure our participants uh, have learned a lot. Uh, but if you, if the yeah. participants, like if you guys have any further questions, please feel free to contact us uh, at uae at nobleprog.ae. And uh, we'll be happy to assist you uh, regarding the training um, inquiries, consultancy, anything that you would like. And uh, thank you so much once again. And uh, we'll be in touch. Uh, we'll share some more upcoming interesting uh, programs, webinars uh, with you guys, and uh, looking forward to welcoming you to the future events. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. I'm just, uh, uh, if you need more uh, or the list of tools that I have been uh, mentioning for the, uh, for this AI and machine learning, uh, this is my email as well. Uh, feel free to drop me a message and I will provide you with the full list. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much, everyone. Thanks. Thanks so Thank much. You. It was a pleasure. Take care and um, have a nice day ahead. Yeah. See you soon in the next couple of seconds. Cheers. Bye. 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 See you.